Where am I? Yeah, in what area in Canada? Ottawa. Ottawa. Okay. I do have a student. I think that uh, one of the students is in Quebec, and he looked them up, and they're supposed to be registered yeah. in Quebec. He's not registered anywhere. He's 100% bogus. Yes. He is not a psychotherapist. Yes. He is not a hypnotherapist of any standing. He's just crazy. He's a con artist, is what he is. He's a con artist of the worst type. So bad. And hypnosis, I mean, in itself, is it's a bit of a con artistry. It's really uh, known really little. I've, uh, I've read a few books a few years ago on that, and it's really is used just for the circus shows lately. There's hardly any of that done deep in, you know, you know, enough. It's never been studied really that much. So, you know, that's that's kind of says it all. Well, yeah, and that he works with cults and he's this and that. You can see where he's trying to drum up business. That's right. That's so right. he's he's in the he, he's not interested in brainwashing. He's interested in doing brainwashing is what it is. That's right. That's right. Did he actually tell you that he was hypnotizing you as he spoke to you? Uh, he put, I'll have to look it up and, and say exactly what it was. But in one of the letters, he said, yeah, maybe I was uh, hip hypnotizing you in it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he actually said that. That's just freaky. Oh, he could try all he wants, but it will never work. Any of his methodologies are not going to work. But the fact that he even said that is 100% unethical. Yeah. 100% unethical. Like I said, this guy is bogus. He's a fake. He's a fraud. You know, he came here. He didn't hear what he wanted to hear. He couldn't wine and dine any of us. And then he decided he's going to get nasty. Turn on you. Yeah, that's just, that's just stupid. Love the pictures you were making of him. <laughs> Go inside. Go inside. <laughs> Did you love those pictures? Oh my God! And he's telling me in the emails how ugly I am. Oh my God! How I need to go. How my body looks toxic, and I need to go have some colonics done. And we're the same age. <laughs> we're the same age, and you look at him, and you look at me. Which one looks healthier? <laughs> Well, he doesn't look healthy at all. He was shaking the whole interview. Yeah, he's so shaking he can barely hold up a mic. <laughs> so this is the great, this is the great, uh, uh, you know. Uh, Houdini? <laughs> oh, my God. For, for vegetarianism, this is, he's some great billboard or some. <laughs> if this is what it does to you. You know, keep it far away. Hi. You know how cute he is. Is he out there swimming today? Yeah, it's hot here, so I just throw them in the pool and I just sit here and watch them. <laughs> well, I was watching your videos all day, so they were okay in the pool, so oh, they're still good. swimming. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> but, yeah, he's quite something. He's quite an escape artist or a con artist or anything. I mean, none of it, what he was saying makes sense at all. It's just one of those things that... <laughs> I mean, I know I don't speak very clearly most of the time. The mind kind of goes from place to place, but he's just completely not made sense. It's like it was an effort for him to talk. Oh, he's all over the map. Yeah. All over the map. It's just very visible. Like, it's not very difficult to see at all. Yeah, it's just, you know, and like I said, you know, he does everything he can to make a point of being as disrespectful as he can. Yeah, yeah. Came was started with Swami G, ended up with Sharon, and then it was just like one after another. None of it had any proof. He was just throwing stuff. Like I made a comment that he was like a baboon throwing banana peels. But <laughs> well, I said even worse. He's 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 like a he wants to present himself as Hanuman. I said he's more like the zoo monkey throwing his excrement at people. That's just you know? <laughs> hi. <laughs> he comes in. It's on open. <laughs> you know? Oh gosh! I mean, honestly, just like 
Yeah, just like a baboon. But he deleted everything except his own. I don't know if he went back and then look at the stuff. See, that's just- what I mean. This is what they do, and this is what Rick Ross' site does too. And then they have the nerve to go on and say nobody from her thing is willing to say anything. Nobody is willing to stand up. Nobody is willing to to say what it is. No, Yet no, they go back and they remove everything, and then they block people so they can't. I mean, you know, and these people from Rick Ross come to my videos. I've had a number of them, detractors. Their videos, that their comments aren't gone. I answered them. I answered them directly on it. That's right. That's right. So who's, who's run what? Like a cult. A cult, oh, you can't disagree with the cult leader. None of them are allowing any disagreement anywhere. So right. where is the cult? It's not well, here. Obviously not here, but there. <laughs> well, it must be. I don't know. You, you up there, are you being chained to be celibate or something up there? Me? Yeah. <laughs> no, but it's kind of like when I'm meditating and I'm thinking there was those glimpses of one and the same. Yeah. What is there to do to have sex with? It's just, it exactly. doesn't make sense. Exactly. And I have a husband and I'm married and um, I mean, it's sometimes a little bit strange, but it just doesn't make sense sometimes lately. You know, what is there to do when it's all the same? And when you kind of feel exactly. a little bit of that, it's like, it just doesn't make it doesn't click. It's just you don't. What for? Yeah, it, and these things shifts take place along the way, you know. And again, it's going to shift again. It's going to go through other shifts, right. you know. Right. And that's what they don't, you know. People don't understand. Is for some places it'll fall away eventually. More than likely, eventually it'll come back. You right. go full circle, you know. But again, it's it's part of the path, part of the journey. Right, right. But the, when those glimpses come in, it's like it just uh, nobody says anything not to do. It's just exactly. it's kind of starting to feel certain things like they just don't make sense and you just don't do it. It doesn't mean it's wrong or right. It just it's just doesn't make exactly. sense at the moment and that's just how it is. Exactly. But um, nobody <laughs> makes anybody to do anything here. Exactly. <laughs> if anything, it's just actually more things make sense. Things are clearer. Mm-hmm. I can express myself clear because I can see clear clarity of, of actions. Yes. And that's, that's what it's about. It's about sitting with your stuff, sitting with the emotions, continuing to do the meditation, and continuing to look deeper into what's motivating you, what's driving you, what's underneath of it, so that you can go and, you know, break that, you know, break that driving force. That's right. That's right. Because the driving force is in everything. Exactly. Absolutely everything. And sometimes I catch myself, I said something, but what was that for? Where did it come from? Like, who ever taught me to say that? Because it completely comes out of nowhere. Exactly. And it makes no sense. Exactly. It's kind of like, whoa. Yes. (laughs) It's a pattern. Okay, I have no clue where it came from, but it's obviously been making me do things. And that's very clear. Right. And that's what it's about. It's where you can begin to see the patterns, how they are, and eventually you'll be able to see where these patterns began from, and you'll be able to break through them, and that's what the path is about. So how people can look on the outside and say that's a cult is beyond me. Yeah. Because, you know, know, a cult is there when you're, you're driven to have a belief system. What belief system is in place here? Absolutely zero. <laughs> there is nothing. You're just looking into your own self and trying to find out the source. And that's really, from what I understand, that's all there is to it. That's, that's it. There is no no bowing. There is no, I mean, you're bowing to your inside world. Exactly. And that's how it works. I mean, you have to surrender to what you have. But you don't even know, like, we don't even, I don't even know what I have so far. You know, there's just exactly. little glimpses here and there. And Exactly. But when people starting arguing and they don't know anything, they yeah, haven't no. opened the book. I, I was just writing um, when you called on YouTube to uh, Michael oh, Crawford, I think. Mm-hmm. Michael Crawford. Right. Well, he, he says he's not interested in your teaching and yet he's right. judging your actions. Well, I can't told him. I said it's like you're judging a book by its color. Yeah. But you're trying to argue about the content with people that are actually trying to read it. So yeah. this is just makes no sense. 
Exactly. What is there? What is there to judge? Open a book, read it, make your own discovery. But what is there? What is there to argue? What is there to bring to the surface? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So I, I said there is a what's his name? Um, the, the 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 hypnotist is on the loose. I <laughs> you maybe you should try to reveal him. <laughs> yeah, maybe you two should get together <laughs> and reveal each other. And you should reveal each other exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but really, read the book, get to know things. I mean, what is there to judge? What is there? What, criticism? There's no criticism. You don't know how to judge a girl at all. Exactly. I, I don't know how they think they can judge something unless they know something about it. And they know nothing about here, and they don't have any intention of wanting to know anything. They, exactly. They're dealing on hearsay on somebody disgruntled the left is spinning a bunch of lies and they'll jump on that and now they're going to say you're guilty and you need to prove yourself innocent because they said x y and z well they're lying yeah. you know i don't know what i can do i can't you know no, it's a bunch of sore egos that got inflared then they can exactly. handle it and they're running out loose making statements but exactly as far as i think you don't know anything to anybody at all and well, i think that's yeah. probably what feeds them is, is you responding to them trying to clear things out then actually it's a service to them because it reflects to them what they do and they don't get it. yeah they don't get it they don't get it they don't want to hear any of it but yeah that's why you know I answer I think people you know if they take the time that you you know are genuine enough to attempt to answer them right. up to a point then they cross the line and when you have someone like this guy that's crossed this line and now he's saying that, you know, they're going to get together and do an intervention and uh, take either Sachi or Siddhananda and basically kidnap them, that's what they do. Now you've crossed the line. You've crossed the line. That's just frightening. Yeah, exactly. That's frightening. He I, actually, he oh, yeah, he actually sent a mail to that effect. So, I, you know, I'm letting him know if they get so much, either one of them gets so much as a hangnail, the police will be coming to your door. Oh, my God. I mean, how do they even get away with it in today's society and all that? I mean, Well, that's why Rick Ross got sued for $5 million, because they kidnapped somebody, held them against their will for five days, no saying worries. they're deprogramming them. And some of these deprogrammers have raped people. They've done all sorts of horrible, heinous things. They are not licensed. And they think that they have the moral right to be able to do that. Wow. They're scary. They're frightening these people, what they're doing. Just a sec, Guji. I'm just going to open the door for the little ones. Oh, Sorry. sure. Yeah, go ahead. I can tell they got a lot of energy. <laughs> That's all I got to say. <laughs> I know. Look at me. I'm all sweating because they, they just run me around. And boys, they have such an energy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, lots of fun. Yeah, Suprat went over and made a comment on that guy's channel. Of course, he took it down as well. They don't allow anything up there. Absolutely nothing up at all. But that just shows they're not open. They they very uh, interested in, in showing their own opinion and, and posting it. Oh, they're throwing their weight around. You know, excuse the expression, but, you know, the way they act and the down-home version, I'm going to get down and dirty with what the expression is, they're chicken shit. That's right. That's right. They, they're scared of something. And I actually posted, I said the same thing, he is, uh, he is scared, he, there's a fear of some kind, I mean, he took it down or it didn't even come through, mm -hmm. but there is some kind of a panic fear that he, he will be disagreed with or somebody has another view when God forbids it doesn't go along with his pita crap. His, well, exactly, well, if he chose to be a vegetarian for all that time, for these 42 years, and he looks like hell, he's not healthy, he no. looks like hell. And you get somebody that's healthy and disagreeing, and he can't stand it. So he's, he thinks PETA, you know, is going to throw their weight around at me, and, like, I'm going to run scared from that. 
right, or right. run scared because he says he's this great psychotherapist with 10,000 people he's working with. He's so bogus and full of shit and a con man. He's a fool of shit. And psychotherapists are the ones that needed to be treated. And uh, I, my, my, uh, my godmother is a psychotherapist, and I love her. You know, she's a wonderful uh, lady. But some statements she would say, it's like, oh, my God, where did that come from? You know, yeah. like they, they really needed to be, they need to be treated themselves most of the time. Most of the time. Stuff. And it's all based on sex, actually. All of the, uh, what is it, Freud? Freudian, or... yeah, Freudian is all this sex bullshit. I mean, it's so antiquated. It's so out there. Yeah. Then they have Jungian. Yeah. Jungian's a little better, Okay. But, I mean, the whole system needs to be updated, and that's why I've done the, the work that I've done in working with some people to try to update. Um, be, because of the psychotherapy and the, the therapy now is so bogus. And, yeah, most of the people that I've met that are psychotherapists are freaking out there. They are so out there, they really need, most of them need help. And they go into it to try to understand their shit, and they can't get a handle on their shit, yet they're going to try to heal everybody else. Oh, no, you can't even. I mean, that's, oh, my I, God. Some people have done therapy for years, and none of it ever helped. You would think it would help, but none of it helped, and they well, just keep going in circles. And exactly, that's the point. That's why I'm saying the whole field needs to be revamped, and that's why I've worked to put together the, the counseling that I do, you know. Yeah. That's, that's it. And I know that the counseling here can work. I've seen it work with people very rapidly to make some changes. Right. Um, because you're getting down to the root. I mean, I haven't done counseling, but from right. my understanding, gets down and cuts the crap straight to the source of it. It, it can. It can open doors, and the, the way that I work, you know, it's done by the client, and uh, we, look at, we look at it. I'm not going to get into the particulars because uh, they're shushing for what's being done here, and it's none of their freaking business. I'm not going to teach them my methodologies. But, uh, yeah, when I work with people... And uh, Sachi is using this in her work, and the clients and everybody there is really surprised at very quickly how she can get to the depth of a lot of things very, very rapidly to see what's going on in the consciousness. So, you know, again, uh, Sachi is uh, continuing her work where she's at, but she's continuing to further her things so that eventually uh, she can go out and, uh, you know, do her own practice, etc. And uh, at that time, we'll be able to put into motion some some uh, little better methodology. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Thank God. Uh, the Thank other God. thing is that I was trying to post on that, under that mm -hmm. video, that Henry, whatever, mm -hmm. he's... La cour de la vie. Je, je le cour. Je le cour. Je le cour. <laughs> I have to say it like he does. So, you know, somebody said I'm making fun of the French language. I'm not. I'm just trying to, the, the way that he says it, which is je le cour. <laughs> no, I mean, he's so. just ridiculous altogether from his face. I mean, I mean, I'm not the same. I'm not judging the face, but it's the way he does things. It's like just gross and weird. And the, the, way he speaks with the, 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 the slow something it just doesn't make sense none of it yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> I was trying to post about his uh, pita things and his vegetarianism and stuff but uh, I, I love the video that you put out about that some time ago about microbes and viruses mm -hmm. and they alive just just because you can't see something it doesn't mean it doesn't want to live Exactly. And it's such a hypocrisy, and it actually shows, right, it goes straight to the source. I mean, if you can't see it, it doesn't mean it doesn't want to live. So you really want to be true to it. I mean, don't kill anything. Exactly. Don't spray your kitchen, don't clean your toilets, I mean, don't wash your hands, don't take medicine from viruses. I mean, it's all alive. Exactly. That's why I said, in you know, in this universe, I hate to be the bearer of bad tidings, but it's life and death in any second. 
That's right. That's just how it is. And it's yet like, nothing dies in the end. It's just the forms are changed and it rotates and goes into a new cycle into something different. But, uh, you know, this is what basically the text said. And in old India, when the, the time of the, you know, what they call the, the golden age of India, etc., that when they sacrificed the animals, that it, they weren't killing them. They were moving them forward into a different life is what it, what it says. They didn't, they didn't see it as killing them. They were moving them forward, you know, releasing them from that form to go on to another life. Which is actually more of a deeper look at it, right? It's more of a, just because it's not usual look, it doesn't mean it's not the right look. Exactly, exactly. And then in the old text there, in the golden age of Hinduism as well, they did use meat. They used meat as medication. They did use it. There are some reasons they had that are valid for using meat, for some ailments, for some other things that are going on. Right, right. Again. This path, people have Kundalini awakenings, it's needed, it helps to stabilize, it helps to ground, that's the way it is. I make no uh, no apologies for that. No, no, and uh, yeah, I mean, I don't have that much phenomena, I mean, I do have certain things mm -hmm. that I, I emailed you with and, and things like that, but last year when I was raw foodist, mm -hmm. before I came to the path, that's when the whole swing of Kundalini hit me across the head because basically I was disabled. I yeah, did a yeah. little bit of a fire breath because I wanted to open it up. And <laughs> I'm laughing at it right now, but, you know, I knew nothing about it. I just did that fire breath because some, some dude on uh, YouTube posted that that's how you open Kundalini. And I thought, oh, cool, let's do it. And I fire breath, and I, yeah. I actually think I had the Kundalini for years because I mm -hmm. had the shakes as I would be falling asleep and things like mm -hmm. that uh, for for years. And yeah. uh, basically, it it flared up so harshly. I, I was disabled for quite a few days. I couldn't drive. There was this all this energy in my head that would close my eyes, and all this light would come up, and right. the sounds. I heard my name. The door slammed, and I thought it was normal right but right. Uh, i was meanwhile i was very disabled for almost a week and that was the vegan i had no uh raw meat i had no I, any other meat i just was raw fruits and vegetables which possibly i don't know if it detoxifies and stuff i lost some weight doing that but then i remember when i came across your path and i started eating meat again um i don't have phenomena there's hardly anything going on at all yeah and uh, sometimes I wonder if it's a good thing or not, but just because I don't know much about it yet. But I don't have those disabled things that I, I you know, like I stuck fingers in the socket. Yeah. My hair is like standing up <laughs> from all this energy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, they know nothing about that. They know nothing about Kundalini. They know no. nothing about spirituality. They make a judgment and stirring the pot. And right. in the end, I think your video is clearing a lot of that junk. Well, that's what we're here to do. You know, Kundalini is not always about as much phenomena as you can have. I had a lot of phenomena. Siddhananda had a ton of phenomena. She still has some. She still has a little further to go, although it's getting deeper and deeper every day, more and more of the thoughtless state, more and more of that. But it's still, mine kind of still is weaving in and weaving out a bit, you know? So, uh She's still in the process of the uh, last of the falling away and the last of the cutting of the threads. But, you know, again, it's not about phenomena. It's not about phenomena. Oh, hold on a minute. Hello? Hello? Yes? <laughs> Ah, good morning, good morning, good afternoon, 